what I'd like to move, move on to now is the, kind of the second part of today's session and ask, well, how do you write a research paper? Which should hopefully be useful as you yourselves come to write up your own, um, your own research projects, your own work. So I'm going to cover two points. Firstly, how should you structure a research paper? What sections should be included? Um, and what should you include in each of those sections? I'm going to refer to that as the kind of anatomy of, of a research paper. And then also, what sources should you be citing in your own paper? What, what, what sources should you be using um, to, to, to cite in your own work? And then we'll move on to part three, where we'll look at um, kind of what we're looking for when we're doing the marking. So the anatomy, if you like, of a research paper. Well, what I'm going to do is go through these main sections that we would expect to usually find. It's fairly standard. It's not always the case, but it's a very strong guidance that you should be using these general sections. And what I'm going to do is, is, is just look briefly at what we would expect to see in each of those sections. So you need a title, of course. Be concise. Usually, not always, but usually avoid punctuation. You'll often see particularly semicolons, um, which, is, which is fine. But where you can, avoid punctuation in titles, avoid numbers, avoid acronyms, avoid abbreviations. And one really good um, approach to use is to try and specify the main example, uh, sorry, the main finding. Try and specify really what your paper says, what the take-home message is. So here's just one of many examples. Widespread amphibian extinctions from an epidemic disease driven by global warming. No punctuation, it's straightforward, it tells you really quite concisely what, what the paper is about and what its main findings are. You should have an abstract, which is essentially, it's a condensed summary of the full article. It says what the aims are, it says what the methods were, it says what the results were, and why those findings are important, what the main conclusions are. This is a way a scientific paper puts everything up front. You know, it's not, it's not like writing a novel where you want to kind of reveal part of the story and part of the conclusions towards the end. In a scientific paper, everything goes up front. You want the reader to get as much as they can, as much of the story as possible, from that abstract. You want an introduction, of course. What was the motivation for the study? What's the current state of knowledge? That's where you have a, a concise literature review. You know, what, what's already in the literature? What have people um, written about and found before? What are the questions, specific, what are the questions that your paper is going to address? What are the specific aims of your study? What were your hypotheses? Why did you choose a particular case study? From the broad picture of what the, what the questions are, why are you focusing in on a particular um, a particular case study, a particular region, a particular study species. The methods. This is factual, straightforward, concise statements of how you did the research, how you addressed those questions and hypotheses that you set up in your introduction. So what data sets were used? Describe the experiments, describe the fieldwork, describe the models. Describe the analyses. What statistics did you use? Throughout all of this, you want to be justifying your methods. So you should be very clear about why you've done it like that. What are the pros? What are the cons? Why have you not used a different method? Why have you chosen this method? Should always be sufficiently detailed that the work could repl be replicated. That's a key function of the method section, is to, is to set it out such that you, there's enough detail that someone else could come along and replicate that work. And other, as with other sections um, that, that, that you have in, in, in your write-up, use subheadings. Have subheadings that set out um, you know, what the data were, what the models were, what the analyses were, what the experiments were. And then you move on to your results section. Simple, that's where you present what you found. Use figures and tables. And always make sure that the legends kind of make that figure or table stand alone. The legends should be detailed enough such that they stand alone without the main text. Not just figure one, figure one, 
statement of what it, what it is showing. Only include data that are relevant to the aims and conclusions. Only include results that are discussed in other sections. What we don't want to see is a kind of splurge of, of data, splurge of information that came out of a model, for example. What we want to find are, in the results section are specific points, specific things that you have found that relate back to your aims and your conclusions. So avoid splurging um, just you know, what, what you found. This isn't the place to include inferences, arguments, extrapolations. Come on to that. That's where you kind of, in your discussion, it's a statement of fact of what you found. And again, use, use subheadings as appropriate. So your discussion session uh, section. This is where you kind of interpret what you found. So you would propose an interpretation of the results. This is also where you, again, kind of place the, what, you're, what you found in the context of other work. Think back, you've kind of set that up in your introduction. This is what we currently know. So when you've been through your methods and results and come back to that context, you're kind of saying, well, what, you know, what, what have we now found and how does that relate back to what the current studies show? Point to limitations. This is really crucial. What are possible alternative explanations? What are limitations of the work? What would you do in future work? What would you recommend others do in future work? And then concisely sum up, you know, have you achieved the aims that you set out? And what are the overarching conclusions? Then you move on to your reference list. This is where you list all the sources that were cited in your paper. It's not a bibliography. Bibliography is a, is a list of relevant sources. This is a list of the sources that are referenced in your write-up. And you should always use a particular referencing style. There are lots of different referencing styles out there, um, but the journal that you're targeting um, or the guidance that you're given you have guidance for this particular module to use a particular style, that of global change biology, you should concisely, you should, should be very carefully use that referencing style. Um, now this, um, I know you can't see the details here, this is just a, a reference list from a particular paper, but it does illustrate that, that the, the, the reference lists can be really rather long for an actual, you know, a, a published scientific paper. In your kind of, you know, in, in papers that you're writing, I, I'd expect you, and this is kind of ballpark, but I'd expect you to be citing at least eight to ten research papers, at least. It, it, it isn't necessarily the case, though, that the more the better. What's important is that you're, you're using good sources that are relevant to the points that you're making. And we'll, we'll talk in a minute a bit more about what those sources should be. So taken as a whole then, these sections should work very closely together. And the better you divide out the sections, the easier you will find it to get a good flow of information through the sections. They should provide a clear and logical narrative. There should be a flow of information from one section to the next. So just one example that's up here. The introduction might set out two hypotheses. You might then have, in the results section, two subsections, each of which addresses those hypotheses. There are any number of ways to set this up, but what you want to very clearly do is set up these kind of subsections and, and areas where you get a very clear flow of information through your write-up. A real common mistake is to kind of Im mix information between sections. In particular, put information about methods in the results section, we, we, we often see that. So be quite rigid about what, which sections should particular statements go in. So, as I mentioned, what, what sources should you be using? Well, you know, this, um, this talk, in effect, is about using the primary literature. So, so that, that is your main answer to this question. You, you should be primarily using and citing papers that are published in the academic literature. So here's just one example of, 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 of a, a reference list from a paper, a, a subsection of, of, of references out, out of a paper in our kind of field. 
Um, so um, these are papers. This is a paper published in Global Change Biology. You get the volume number here and then the page numbers. So this is the format um, that, that, that we might use for this particular reference list. And you'll see you know, some papers published in Science and Nature, some published in more specialised journals in, in, in our field. What you'll en often end up doing is publishing, uh, sorry, is citing uh, some papers in these very high impact general journals like Science and Nature um, that kind of some ways set out the big picture context for your work, the big, the big questions. And then you might have some more specialised papers that describe, for example, your particular study system. So maybe you're working on uh, lizards and, and this would be a paper um, that refers in a more specialised journals to, to your particular study species. Or it might be um, more specialised papers in more specialised journals that refer to some of the methods that you've used. So this might be a paper that's referring to some of the modelling methods that you've used. But these are the kinds of citations that you should be um, using in, in your research papers, in your write-ups. Let's just give a few examples of um, more tricky ones. So here's, here's a, a, a book that you might add, um, uh, published by a, a very senior professor uh, in, in our field, um, published in a university press. Um, so th this, would be a, this would be a good source, I would say, um, to cite. But a more general point is to note that, that books are generally not peer-reviewed unless they're published in university presses. This one is Oxford University Press. So be cautious about using and citing more kind of mass market commercial books um, from no non-academic publishers. I'm not saying don't do it, I'm saying you know, they're not, that's not, they're not peer reviewed in the same way that the academic literature that we're talking about is. So, so use those with, with, with more caution. Here's another example. This is a, uh, uh, an article that was up on the BBC News website. Um, here's the date, it was uh, in, uh, towards the end of last year. Um, cheetahs heading towards extinction as population crashes. This isn't a peer-reviewed scientific article. It's a news report about a paper that was published in the scientific literature. So what you should be really citing is the paper that was published in the original, uh, you know, the, the, in, in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. Again, I'm not saying never take account and, and, and use these kinds of sources, but this, this isn't the source that you should be citing unless it says something you know, particular that you're referring to. You should be citing the raw primary literature. You might use some um, data from just an example, the United Nations Statistics Division, their environmental indicators. Well, that's, uh, um, that would be, I would say, an acceptable source of data. You know, this is a reputable source, um, so this would be um, a good citation that isn't the peer-reviewed academic literature, but I would say is a good citation. Uh, this would be questionable. Um, so, hopefully you see the, the, the general points that I'm, I'm trying to make in terms of... Um, how you should be writing a research paper, how you should structure that, that paper, and how you should um, be using citations. 